All right, so today we're gonna to revisit this Pyrotronics F3 smoke detector that has radium inside of it. And some people had questions about what was like the absorbed dose of radiation I got making that video about this detector. And that video took, believe it or not, four hours to film because I filmed it over the course of two days. And so I'm gonna try and calculate uh, my exposure from having the device in this range right here or about 15 inches away from me. Um, I'm using 15 inches because that's what actually what it says on the smoke detector here to avoid prolonged exposure within 15 inches of the detector. And so I figure I just use that as a good baseline just to kind of see what the dose rate is and to give you an idea. And to do the dose rate correctly, I'm going to use uh, this Radeye B20. I have to look at it for a second there. And uh, I'm going to use a gamma filter on it. So what this filter does is it actually goes and blocks out the other types of radiation that is coming off of this smoke detector because the smoke detector emits uh, alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. And I'm not really too worried about uh, the detector picking up the alpha radiation because it's, the alpha radiation doesn't travel very far. So what I'm mainly concerned about blocking is the beta radiation because to figure out accurate dose rates, you really need to only be looking at gamma radiation, even though all those other types of radiation can um, damage your cells and affect you and they should be counted but for the sake of argument and for testing i'm just gonna stick to gamma radiation but anyway let's get started You have this gyro counter here that's set up for counts per minute. But if I go and I take off just this rubber sleeve here and put on the gamma filter, it will automatically switch over to microsieverts per hour. And that's what we'll be using to measure the dose rate coming off of this uh, radioactive smoke detector. Right there. So as you can see, the dose rate from being this close to this radium smoke detector is around 1.7, 1.8 microsieverts per hour. And that comes out to about six microsieverts of radiation exposure over the course of four hours, which is about how long it took me to film this uh, video that featured this type of smoke detector in it. And so that's around the same that you would get from like a dental x-ray, a single exposure dental x-ray. So that's, you know, that's fairly low, you know, but I mean, it's uh, still radiation exposure. And if I bring this closer, you'll start to see the numbers start climbing up and up. We can always just turn on the clicker too, because I know people love hearing that. Let's see if I can get my hand in there with that. So as we bring this closer, you hear the counts. So that's about two inches away from the detector. And it's about 30 microsieverts, but that's from the top of this device. If we turn it on its side here, and have it the same distance. We're getting around 18, 19, 22, 24. So it is giving you a little healthy dose of radiation here. So now we'll lower this down a bit and see what it would be like if it was right at chest level. So now I have lowered this down to about chest height and we're at, let's see here, 
we are about a foot away, 12 inches away from this smoke detector. And I know that's within, that's closer than the 15 inches, but this is actually where I would have been sitting uh, filming this episode for this detector. So this is how I'm gonna get my dose rate off of this. And so if we're gonna take uh, this reading we're having right now, which is kind of high, uh, the two point, uh, let's say 2.78 right there, 2.78 times four hours is 11.12 microsieverts per hour. And so that's uh, not bad as far as exposure goes. Uh, that's probably double what you get from a dental x-ray. So, um, you know, still it's not something you want to spend, uh, you know, a lot of time uh, next to this device, but it's not horrible, but it's definitely something to be uh, aware of. And so if we were to bring this closer, we can see, I'll turn on the clicker for it, so you can get an idea, because a visual or an audio cue is kind of nice to hear and see how it responds because that kind of gives people an idea of how much radiation is coming out of a device. So if I was to bring it closer, you can hear it start to come up. So that's right at contact. I'm getting around, uh, sorry, that's at contact. <laughs> that's uh, 45 microsieverts per hour. That's not even the top. If I were to put it on the top here, it's a lot higher. 102. Now, that makes me think that this gamma filter, it only really works if it's at a certain range because I think that the beta radiation is able to overcome this filter and actually pass through it if it's in enough, if it's in great enough of intensity. And so that's why on the top here, you see it shoot up to into the hundreds, but on the side, right up on it, it goes up to 48, 47 microsieverts per hour. And that number I would tend to believe because all that alpha and beta radiation is going to be blocked by that aluminum housing because it's thick enough. So, but anyway, I hope that answers some of your questions. So the other thing we're going to be looking at too is uh, using this alpha radiation viewer and this is pretty cool it actually has a uh, what is it it's silver activated zinc sulfide so that's what's on this little kind of opaque screen right here so what it does is if you have a strong enough alpha source like an alpha radiation source like these americium buttons out of a smoke detector you can put those facing on the other side of this little thin screen here. And if it's in complete darkness, you can actually see a blue glow. And so I'm gonna show what that looks like with these sources and then with this source too, because the post that's in here that has radium uh, foil on side of the, inside of the post here does look pretty cool when it starts getting close to this uh, alpha screen, because you can kind of see the direction that the radiation is coming out uh, from this post. And then I'm also going to use this on the little pieces of foil that are on the inside of the detector. So that's kind of cool to see, you know, something different and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. So let's get started. First up, we have these americium buttons out of the smoke detector. And these produce a very uh, distinctive blue glow because they produce a lot of alpha radiation. Next up is the radium post out of the top of that Pyrotronics smoke detector. And this has a, a radium foil wrapped around the top of the post. And as I bring the zinc sulfide screen closer, you see this spray pattern of all this alpha radiation coming off of that post. And so it looks like noise in like in that blue and what that actually is is the alpha radiation interacting with that zinc sulfide screen producing scintillations like little bursts of light so next is some of the radium foil that's on the inside of that smoke detector 
And when I put the zinc sulfide screen right up against that, you can see it perfectly, uh, the shape of that radium foil. This is also another very intense alpha source. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing what alpha radiation looks like underneath this uh, alpha radiation viewer. It's kind of cool. It's something different. Uh, it's got like the kind of eerie blue glow to it. Um, you can pick these up on eBay. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, but uh, don't expect too much from them. Uh, you need a pretty strong alpha source. These uh, americium buttons are actually a really good, easy source that you can uh, find in a smoke detector. Not really advocating buying a smoke detector and, and uh, tearing it apart and uh, getting the americium buttons out of it, or the one that's in there. But uh, if you're looking for one, that would be the easiest uh, source to use in conjunction with this uh, alpha viewing screen. And so these are pretty cool. Just like, as I said, don't expect too much from them because it does take uh, very intense uh, alpha radiation for it to glow really like blue. And it needs to be extremely dark in the room that you're doing this in, like no lights at all. Uh, but anyway, hopefully you enjoy this video. See you next time.